Hi everyone, today we'll be looking at the paper Distilling Step-by-Step -step, Outperforming Larger Language Models with Less Training Data and Smaller Model Sizes. So um, when you look at the amount of training data required based on model sizes, you have these very large language models uh, which require uh, very little data to um, perform well on a particular task. Right? So larger language models can do a um, few short learning. Uh, they do in-context learning and thereby you don't really need to uh, prompt them with a large amount of data to extract uh, decent performance on a particular task. On the other hand, if you're using the uh, pre-trained and fine-tuned paradigm, uh, you would be using um, a large amount of data to fine-tune a smaller model to maybe uh, perform comparably compared to the larger language model. So distilling step-by-step -step is... Um, sort of a midpoint between both. Uh, you do require uh, more training data than larger language models, but the size of the model which you would be training when you're using distilling step-by-step -step would be way smaller than what you would uh, do if you had a larger uh, language model. So uh, their method is shown here. So they basically use a chain of thought reasoning to extract rationales from large language models. So uh, they feed in the data and they basically get the rationale as well as the label. So along with the label, we have an added supervision which they want to use for the smaller language model. And that's the chain of thought. Uh, so they basically use a few shot chain of thought where um, they have an example. They have some demonstrations um, illustrating what chain of thought basically looks like. And then they have a query on which they want the language model to give an output. So uh, let's say this is the this is the demonstration, right? So um, they have a question, and then the answer is just not the label, the right answer, but rather they have a rationale or a reasoning, a, a bunch of uh, sentences which indicate the reasoning which the language model uh, is exposed to before providing the answer. And then you have a query. The language model is basically given this input and then you um, get the response from the language model. So they use this few shot um, prompting and uh, with that the language model basically and then on a new query it's basically able to just give the rationale as well as the label right and they use this label and the rationale to train a smaller language model. So the smaller uh, model is trained both to predict the label as well as to predict the rationale to match the rationale. So uh, usually in distillation, you have a teacher model and then you have a student which is trying to um, match its distribution to the teacher model or learn from the teacher model. right? And uh, here, in addition to just learning how to predict the right labels, if you also learn to match your rationals to what the teacher produces, they say that uh, it, it basically achieves better performance compared to just matching the labels. So, um, so for label matching, they have a loss called L label, which is basically the cross entropy loss of what the model predicts, the smaller model predicts, the student model predicts, and also the uh, labels from the teacher model or the larger language model. So, um, so why had they either use the uh, output from the large language model, or when they have human annotated labels, they ju just use uh, the ground truth. Right. So in addition to the label loss, they also have the rational loss where they basically feed in the input to the to the smaller model and they expect the smaller model to generate the same rationale as the teacher model or the larger language model. Right. So um, they have a label, uh, they have a loss which basically uh, combines both the label loss as well as the rational loss. So um, that's the... Uh, that's that's what they basically do differently compared to the uh, prior distillation methods, and then they um, they have some experiments where they vary the training set size, and they compare the accuracy of the um, model which uses uh, rationale along with the label loss, and the fine-tuned model, and they find that even when you have like very few uh, examples which are shown to the model. Um, the one which uses distilling step by step basically performs way better than the fine tune in uh, in some of the uh, data sets. Um, and in some of them, even after exposing the model to all the data in the data set, uh, you do see a good difference 
between the distilling step-by-step -step model and the fine-tuned model, uh, but not in all data sets though. So they have two different uh, setups. Uh, in one, they basically have the ground truth, which is the human label data sets. And in the other, they don't have the ground truth. They only have the unlabeled data set. Uh, I believe they're using uh, the labels from a larger language model. And in this case, it's 540 billion palm model. And they try to train their models to mimic the labels which are uh, predicted by the large language model. So uh, here as well, they vary the training set size and then they measure the test accuracy and then they see uh, a similar trend here where um, even though you don't have the ground truth uh, labels, you're just using the labels from the larger language model, you do see a um, comparable uh, difference between uh, the test accuracy of the fine-tuned model as well as the distilled model, which was distilled step by step. Um, and then they look at the different model sizes, right? Um, both in, in, again, the two setups, one using human label data sets and the other using just unlabeled data sets. And they find that um, it outperforms these large language models uh, because these have been fine-tuned on uh, the outputs of these large language rationals of these large language models. Um, so they they find that uh, in some data sets it basically out not not only in some in most data sets it outputs it uh, outperforms the um, largest uh, language model which is a 540 billion palm uh, model. And uh, you can see that uh, basically 11 billion uh, T5 model is able to perform way better than um, a 540 billion palm model. Right. Um, that's what they see here. And then the trend sort of continues uh, when they have unlabeled data set and they're trying to match the uh, the, uh, the ground truth labels, uh, which they are using here is what the uh, large language model generates. And here as well, they find that uh, smaller sized models, which are trained uh, with distilling step by step, and even the fine tuned models, they outperform the uh, larger language models performance uh, on on some data sets, uh, not on all though. And then they uh, they look at the uh, performance with uh, human labeled examples. So here you can see they compare the performance with these large language models, and you can see that uh, they expose. Um, so these larger language models usually perform few short uh, learning. So they don't require as much data, right? Um, so they do achieve uh, good performance or decent performance with very small amount of data compared to the fine-tuned models. But here they show that by distilling step by step, you can basically do achieve like good enough performance when you have a uh, very small amount of training data. And um, and then when you expose the model uh, to the entire data set or uh, sorry, to, to more amount of samples, you basically increase the performance of these smaller models. Um, and here, here you see that um, in the fine tuning case, even though you expose the model to 100% of the data, you still see that it is not achieving as good performance as the distilling step-by-step -step model. And the same trend uh, sort of continues here as well. So basically, um, this paper um, proposes a distillation by uh, using the rationals which are extracted from large language models. So this is added supervision along with uh, label matching uh, by these smaller language models. And, um, and and this basically achieves comparable performance and sometimes even outperforms the larger language models.